Hello, my name is Mark Crosswell. Welcome to the Golf Swing Weekly Fix. Today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about setup and how a poor setup can encourage a sway in the backswing. We're also going to talk a little bit about push slices, so people losing the ball off to the right and uh, then it starts to right, goes further right, so trying to fix a push slice. We've also got question a week talking about hybrids or fairy woods and what's the difference. So, out here on the range, it's a lovely day. Let's get stuck in. Right guys, got some swing sent through the apps here. And this is a common fault. See this amongst golfers all, all over the world and from loads of swings that I get sent through the apps where we see real classic example here of two golfers swaying. So moving outside of their right foot on the backswing, really moving behind the ball. Now what I want you to do to try and think about fixing this fault is rather than just purely focus on your right hip, which you're gonna to need to do, I want you also to think about your setup. For both of you, you're setting up very straight. So with head on top of the ball and hips and shoulders almost in line with each other, just dead straight. Now, if you think about, if you take golf out of the equation, if I just put the club down, if I stand here and literally put one hand lower than the other, which is what you're doing on a golf club, what happens is my hips naturally just fold forward slightly and my right shoulder just naturally drops a bit lower than my left. It, it's perfectly natural. Unless you've got one arm longer than the other, if I put one hand lower than the other, just in front of me, I get this slight tilt forwards. And it's this tilt forwards, so this slight tilt more towards the target with your hips and back with your upper body. This kind of little bit of a movement forwards with your hips is what's gonna allow you to really turn against your hips on the way back. So what happens is I'm gonna start, hips slightly forward, left ear on the ball, so my head's behind the ball, and then I'm gonna turn against my right knee. If I start more with my legs almost just straight bent this way, rather than having this right knee kicked in, head over the ball, as soon as I start turning, the natural way for me to go is for my hip just to kick out to my right here, your left on the screen. So you've got to start with this slight indentation down your right leg, right side, and then on the backswing, you want to feel about turning into that right side to really get rid of the sway. You're never going to get rid of the sway if you're setting up in the position you're both setting up in, which is just very central. So look, simple drill. Got one of these alignment sticks here. What I'm going to do is just stick it in front of the ball and back foot. I've done this in other videos. It's a great way to just think about your setup. And what I'm going to do is straight out of the ground opposite the ball here. And I'm going to set up to my ball. But what I'm going to try and do is make sure my left ear and my head is behind this alignment cane. Then I'm going to feel that my right knee is kicked in over the instep of my right foot. So I've got that little indentation on my right side. Then from there, I'm going to turn against my right knee and push through. So that's instantly giving me the feel of getting rid of this sway. I mean, if you take it to extremes, if I was to stand this way, so really indentated on the right side, swaying now would be nearly impossible. It would be such a big movement to get there. So for you guys to fix your sway, get playing some better golf, you really want to think about improving that setup and then thinking about your sway swing thoughts. Hope that helps. Let me know how you get on. So great footage sent to me here via my apps again of a push slice. Push slice, such a common shot. I mean, how many people suffer from starting the ball right and then slicing off to the right. I mean, I hear it every day in my lessons. So look, what's happening with this guy's swing? It's really interesting. It's so clear from the footage you can see where the ball's going. What's happening is he's hitting the ball, say, along this yellow line. That's where he wants the ball to fly. Then he's swinging along this yellow line. So he's actually applying the club to the ball on a relatively straight path to where he wants to hit the ball. But then as he strikes the ball, the club just simply isn't being delivered to the ball in a straight direction. It's being left, as we know, open off to the right. So what happens is the ball starts along the black cane, but because the orange swing path is across the line of the back cane, in effect, he has swung out to in to his face. So the face is open to the path. So what happens is the ball starts where the black cane points off to the right, and because he swung across the black cane, that then gives it the spin at the end. So the issue isn't his swing path with this one. The issue is more that he's not controlling the club face. And the reason he's not controlling the club face 
as you should see as we take the video through what happens is he gets the classic chicken wing on the way through where the left elbow pops out to the side so that's a classic example of trying to lead more with your left elbow so as he comes through he's trying to lead with his left elbow and that restricts any kind of rotation any release as we know it of the club face so the club face is now going to work on its own angles not in relationship to where your body is turning so that simple fix if you guys suffering from suffering from push slices this was really effective i get um loads of people to do this lessons and it almost gives them an instant fix if they can then sustain it and repeat it and hit balls with it it's harder but it's as soon as they connect doing this fault they stop the push slice so what i want you to do is hit shot just make a really slow half follow through and stop and try and feel that your elbow is not outside of your body line so you want to feel that your elbow is not tucked in it's out in front of you but it's not outside of your body line it stays inside your body line then in turn we want your left hand going above your elbow so basically as you come through left hand is moving up elbow staying in and what that does is it naturally gets the face rotating working with the way your body's working so the face is staying much straighter through impact not being left open which is what happens when you get this separation with your elbow on the way through this chicken wing so again great way of hitting shots it'll feel wrong it'll feel awkward it'll feel strange don't worry about that because it's going to be different to what you're naturally doing set yourself up don't try and hit any particular distance just half follow through and try and keep your elbow inside your body line if you do that what you're going to find is that the club just naturally turns over you don't need to feel any rotation with your hands any flipping or flicking your arms over all that will do is if you keep that connection on the way through your body is the fact that you're turning your body will turn that face over and the push slice will almost disappear hope that helps chicken wing i've done it in other videos i've used that drill before it's a great drill really works practice it let me know how you get on Right guys, question of the week. Great question here. I get this asked a lot actually. What's the difference between a fairway wood and a rescue? So in my hands, I've got two 17 degree golf clubs. One would be known as a rescue hybrid. One would be known as a fairway wood. Biggest difference between these two clubs, the fairway wood has a bigger head. So it's bigger and rounder. And the fairway wood is longer than the rescue. So out of these two clubs, the big difference is that the fairway wood is going to hit the ball further. Even though these are the same loft, this is a bigger lever, it's a longer club, I can pick up more club head speed as you give me a longer weapon, a longer club. So the fairway wood will hit further than the rescue. But hitting these two clubs, the fairway wood only hits further than the rescue if you can handle the length of a fairway wood from the ground so as soon as you put the ball on the ground use a longer club like this it's harder it's going to be harder harder to connect so if i give this one a hit now for me i'm a big fan of fairway woods i've used them all my life i love rescues as well but i've got no issues with fairway woods but i would say almost 89 percent of my lessons a wood from the ground is one of the hardest clubs for them to hit to get the angle of attack correct and to get any of the lines the swing path and club face control because of the length of the club with no safety net from the ground is a harder club so if you want something that is easier to hit but you're not afraid to sacrifice a few yards because this is going to go further these two 17 degrees are going to go further than most of your long irons if not all of your long irons the rescue here 17 degrees the same loft as the fairway because of the shorter shaft length doesn't feel dissimilar to an iron you can play it similar to a long iron so feel like you're hitting down on the ball a bit more this club is much easier to feel like you're going to get some lift some launch and some control in its direction so look it's a bit of a you need to get custom fit for them really it, it's a bit of a question there's no black and white answer for this the fairway wood is longer than the rescue even when they're the same length the fairway wood will hit further it on paper that's the theory but if you can't hit a fairway wood from a ground so your quality of strike isn't very good which will make the ball go offline and lose distance and you simply don't feel comfortable with it then the rescue as a whole on an average of 10 shots will go further because you're simply going to hit it better so really in answer to your question fairway wood's going to go a little bit further than the rescue but not if you can't cope with it from the fairway so the big answer here if you're looking to get in one of these and in the question i think you say you can only get one of them 
go and get fitted. If you're gonna spend any decent amount of money, get fitted, see if you can actually handle the fairway wood from the ground and see if it gives you the distance you require. If the rescue gives you all the distance you require and lower lofted like a 17, then stick with the easier one. Why not always stick with the easier option? And that gives you a little brief idea of what's the difference between a fairway wood and a rescue, predominantly length, and then ease of hit or difficultness of hit between that length. Let me know how you get on. Post a comment, let me know which one you end up with. I'd love to know. Thanks for watching. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.